Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we are exploring the beautiful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England, following in the trail of Herbert Evans, who cycled around this region and wrote about his experiences in this wonderful book, The Highways and Byways in Oxford and the Cotswolds, published in 1905, 114 years ago. Welcome back to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and at long last, we're back filming the wonders of the English countryside. It is so amazing that so many of you have stuck with us over the last year. In fact, more than that, thousands of you have joined us and supported us over the extraordinary year of COVID. So much so that we are beyond words excited to be out and about again searching for lovely places to talk about and film. To get back on track, we've decided to visit a town that we ignored during our early travels. And we've never been quite sure why. Chipping Norton, commonly known as Chippy, is extremely famous. It's the centre of a social set who gathered around our ex-Prime Minister, David Cameron, and for a while, they seem to have considerable influence. It is still the case that this area is very grand. The houses cost a fortune. The standard of restaurants, shops, and services in general is incredibly high. But some of the reasons these sorts of people like it so much is its gentle beauty, its closeness to various main English cities, including London, and the fact that the locals would rather be seen dead than to pester someone simply because they're famous. If we meet anyone in our travels today, we will simply ignore them. Unless, of course, they recognize Widget, in which case we will obviously have to be polite. So come with us. We're gonna show you around this beautiful town. It has a lovely church and lots of interesting buildings. Chipping Norton is built on the side of a steep hill its name means Market North Town and suggests that perhaps its religious rank, at least, when named, was lower than somewhere closely to the south. John Blair, our extremely useful Oxford professor of medieval history, with whom, in my guise as the chairman of the Bampton Archive, I've been lucky enough to have many connections over the years, suggests that Charlbury now a smaller and more peaceful place, was, at the time, of greater importance. The settlement started with a Martin Bailey castle built at the foot of the hill, of which now only the earthworks remain. The high street shows how steep the slope is. The houses on the east side are at least a storey higher than the other side of the street. Many of the houses with their little courtyards and side alleys, are medieval, but a lot of them were given Georgian facades in the 18th century. There's no doubting the prettiness of the street, despite the fact that traffic is often heavy through the town and modern lorries, out of scale with the buildings and the street, thunder their way through with a relentless determination. Perhaps the reason I avoided this town is that my dentist is here. In fact, they're in the building behind me here. A wonderful bunch of dentists to whom I've been trusting the welfare of my teeth for a couple of decades now. But what I didn't know until I started to research the history of the town was that the building they're in is truly and spectacularly important. It is here that in 1971, Richard and Mike Vernon set up the Chipping Norton Recording Studios. It was the first residential recording studio in the country, and it operated for 28 years. Most importantly, it was here that one of the greatest saxophone riffs ever played was recorded. Those of you who remember Baker Street by Jerry Rafferty will know exactly what I mean. Having got over that excitement, we're going to carry on showing you round. In the centre of the village, if you take the lanes down the slope towards the church, 
you come across a very pretty set of almshouses. They were built by one Henry Cornish in 1640, a very familiar demonstration of the inclination of wealthy people to show their good nature and generosity at a time of a breathtaking gap between rich and poor. Just a little further down the lane, you come across the Church of St. Mary the Virgin. Of this church, Evans writes, It appears to have been built in the decorated style, and to have had its nave rebuilt and its splendid clerestory added in the 15th century. The large square windows of the clerestory on the north and south, together with its fine east window over the chancel arch, have a very imposing effect. They ensure abundance of light, while the piers of the nave, which are carried up between the windows to the roof, add the impression of height. The tower was built in 1823. The original tower, a very good one, to judge from Skelton's plate, having been taken down. Why, one would be glad to discover. It might have been thought that after what had taken place not so many years before at Banbury, the pullers down of ancient buildings might have had the fear of such evil doing before their eyes. You'll have seen, as we've wandered around the town, how busy the place is. Um, it's a thriving metropolis these days, but Evans, when he was writing in 1905, was not quite so complimentary. He wrote, I hope no patriotic citizen of Chipping Norton will look askance at me for saying that the visitor to the town will not be overwhelmed with sightseeing. There is, of course, the cloth factory, and Chipping Norton Tweeds have quite a local reputation, but today, when we have walked around the town and visited the church, we shall be ready to start on our return to Oxford. He obviously felt that this place wasn't anything like what we see today. He also said Chipping Norton, though holding the rank of the third town in the county, is little more than a name to the outside world. It lies on no great thoroughfare. It is true it has a railway station on the Banbury and Cheltenham line, down at the bottom of the hill, but for every 500 people who pass through the junction four miles away, I doubt if more than one passes through Chipping Norton itself. It's only just possible to imagine how quiet a place it must have been in those days. It's remarkable what a difference 120 years makes. The High Street is obviously the focal centre of the town, but search down the side streets and you find Chippy's special little extras. It's theatre, one of the most successful regional theatres in the country, but whose appalling problems we can only guess at after the Covid disaster of the last year, is one building that your explorer hopes with a passion will reopen in all its glory as soon as possible. It would be a tragedy to lose such an amazing facility in our county. We'll keep an eye and we'll let you know. At the other end of the high street we find a small museum. Now obviously I would very much like to encourage all of you to visit any local museums you come across. This one has a wonderful collection of old photographs. The spectacular neoclassical town hall built in 1842 is a hugely important part of the village's social life. Events of all kinds are held here in the two rooms, one above another, and it's exciting to think that they'll soon be ringing again to the voices of people enjoying themselves. On Boxing Day, the Haythrop Hunt has met in this square for centuries. I came here first in the 1950s to see the gathering, and since then many times latterly with my own children, usually ending up with a delicious meal in the suitably named Fox Pub at the end of the street. The imposing Bliss Mill on the west side of the town was built as a tweed mill in 1872. Chipping Lawton Tweed gained a considerable reputation and provided employment for many of the locals. 
It closed in 1980 and has since been converted into flats. It's a microcosm of something we're always aware of in our travels, the change in priorities over the last century. This extravagant building was put up with respect to the Industrial Revolution and for people to make things in. And we, appreciating the beauty and quality of the building, use it to live in. It seems we are prepared to pay a substantial premium to do so. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our lovely trip around Chippy. It is such a lovely town. Don't forget, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and all the other social media platforms. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next week in another wonderful part of this part of the country. See you then.